Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be going in-depth on a couple of the latest console mods that just dropped, and thankfully, they are mods that were very highly anticipated by the community, and those mods are the IX-5 and Frogs side-by-side. -side. Now, there's been a lot of hype around both of these mods, and I'm very, very happy to announce that as of today, they are here and available on consoles, and that means... All systems. Now, the gameplay you're watching in this video is going to be gameplay from an Xbox Series X. However, like I said before, these vehicles are available on all Xbox and PlayStation systems. So first, let's talk about Frogs side-by-side. -side. Now, Frogs side-by-side, -side, a lot of you guys, if you play a lot of, for example, Off-Road Outlaws or maybe some other off-road games that have a lot of side-by-side um, -side vehicle presence in those games, you're going to be all about this. Now, or even if you're just somebody that really likes to um, take a side-by-side -side or an ATV out into the off-road parks or the wilderness on the weekends, this definitely is going to be a vehicle that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy playing around with on console. Consoles. And I know that after a lot of talk and after a lot of anticipation and after a lot of, you know, um, kind of back and forth, this thing being on consoles opens up a whole new realm of what you can do. It opens up a whole new realm of playability. It opens up a whole new realm of scouting and exploration and, and really even role-playing gameplay because think about it now you can throw this on the back of either a flatbed or even like a trailer that you're pulling behind one of your trucks and you can legitimately role play out a off-road park adventure or a side-by-side -side adventure now for this map i took them to the stadium super trucks map because not only is it available on consoles but the good thing about stadium super trucks is that it presents a lot of different opportunities for testing not just through different obstacle types, but through different types of terrain entirely, right? You have the rock section, you have the mud section, you have the logs, but not only do you have those, you also have the racetrack with the jumps, so you can do high-speed testing. Literally, you can do high-speed testing and then recover back to the garage and then drive, you know, like 20, 30 feet the other direction and have an off-road trail with rocks ready to go. Now, jumping over into the iX5, the iX5 is a very interesting rig. Now, you can set it up to be wildly, ridiculously fast with the OP engines, or you can set it up with the either V or SE designated options, which give you more of a vanilla gameplay experience. Now, if you're looking to use this in a campaign playthrough, I would definitely recommend going with the SE parts. Um, if you go with the OP parts, honestly, it might end up being a little frustrating for you because you might be wanting to just kind of creep down a trail, and if you get on the throttle a little bit too hard with the OP engine, you'll literally just fly off into a tree. Now, however, if you are going to be taking this thing to, say, for example, the Truck Knight map, or this map, the OP engines are actually a lot of fun to play around with, and if you're going to a map like this, I definitely recommend using the OP engine and the OP gearbox and having fun with it, you know what I mean? If you're if you're wanting to race your friends, if you're wanting to um, make runs around the racetrack, if you're wanting to um, like drag race people or race people down the, uh, the kind of competitive off-road track, I, there's a lot to be said for the OP designated engines and gearboxes available on this rig. Now, I went with a little bit more of a classic look on mine, a little bit more of a classic look and feel with the old school style winch bumper, the standard kind of mud terrain style tires. They are tall, they are over 40 inches tall. However, I do think they complement the rig very, very, very well, and they're actually really good tires. They're not quite as good in the mud as some of the designated mud tire options, but if you're going to be using this thing in the mud basically on a dedicated basis, there are much better tires to go with. This is more of a all-purpose, all-surface tire. Now, granted, it's not the best on pavement or asphalt, but it was never designed to be the best on pavement or asphalt. Now, parking these together on a console system, like parking them right next to each other, especially as someone that has used both of these vehicles on PC for a while now, is a really cool moment, and I think it's always such a cool moment when, you know, mods that you've been using for a while on PC make the jump to console, and you literally sit down in your living room in front of your Xbox or your PlayStation or whatever it is that you have, and you're just chilling out in your living room playing around with these modded vehicles on your console system like that's something that we did not even have a 
you know, like an inkling of being able to do years ago when we were playing Mudrunner. There was no way, no way that that was even going to be part of that reality. But the coolest thing about it is that now it is, and it's such a cool thing to have available to us. Now, the Jeep ended up making that jump on its first go, and I really wanted to see how these two would do on that jump, especially just going back to back with each other, like hit the jump, recover back, swap over to the other vehicle, and then make a run at the jump. Now, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know that the, the Jeep had a little bit of an easier time with the jump than the side-by-side -side did. Now, the side-by-side -side isn't fully tuned for this particular track, so I can't really blame the side-by-side -side at all, but it was, it just happened to be where we were at the time, and I was like, you know what? I want to see if they can both do the jump. Now, as you'll see on my first attempt, I didn't really back up all that far. I just kind of got into it and went, and this was in fifth gear, and it did not, did not make it. It came really, really close, but it didn't quite make it. Now, for the second attempt, I decided to back all the way up to the wall and try again. I really wanted to make sure that when I went for this attempt, I was in sixth gear. And it was close, but it ended up making it into sixth gear right before the edge of the jump. And I thought I was going to make it, and then I realized it was just a tiny bit. Literally, it was probably two or three miles an hour too slow. Maybe just not quite there. But I figured, you know what? Let's go ahead and head over to the off-road test track and see how both of these do over there. Because really, at the end of the day, that's where these things both truly shine. Now, in terms of scouting, the side-by-side -side is a beautiful, beautiful thing. You could take this into a campaign map and literally have the time of your life discovering watch points. You literally could have the time of your life discovering watch points with it. However, I do recommend turning your game volume down a little bit if you plan on using this thing because it is very, very, very loud. And that's one of my only weird kind of critiques of it is the fact that I find it to be almost too loud and overpowering It when compared to some of the other vehicles in the game. Like, I get if you straight pipe a side-by-side, -side, it's gonna be really freaking loud, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be one of the loudest things in the game. And let me know in the comments section down below how you feel about the volume level of this thing. I personally feel like it's a little bit too overpoweringly loud. I feel like it could definitely um, use to be updated with a little bit of a lower volume sound file. But again, that's just me. Um, it, and I think the weird thing about it too is that if you're using this alongside other vehicles... I don't want to have to turn my volume down for this thing and then turn my volume back up to hear the other trucks that I'm using. So it just kind of creates this weird back and forth between the volume of this thing and the volume of everything else that you're using at the time. So a little bit of a thing to think about there. Let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have had that same uh, feeling and thought towards this thing, uh, especially if you've used it. But with that being said, I do think everything else about this thing, I love. I absolutely love the fact that you have the option between standard off-road tires and some really, you know, um, really deep mud tires. I think the mud tires are definitely going to fill a sort of niche that really do enjoy dedicated mudding-based gameplay, whereas the option of the standard off-road tires are definitely going to be more widely used by people that want to take this thing trail riding or want to use it for scouting or want to use it for um, maybe like helping get to a certain place on a map. I definitely think that when you're talking about general purpose off-road, the tires we're using right now are going to be more used for that. But again, if you're somebody that likes going to the off-road park maps, dude, Throw those, th throw those mud tires on there and just absolutely have a blast in the mud with those. Now, let's talk about the iX5. Now, the iX5, I think, definitely fills a niche in SnowRunner that has been needing to be filled for a very, very long time. And I really do hope that more people get into that sort of niche of classic Jeeps, classic off-road vehicles. And I think there's a really, really strong amount of the player base that really loves vehicles like this. I mean, classic Jeeps have always had a really, really special place in my heart personally. And I know that they have a special place in the hearts of a lot of other off-road enthusiasts. Now, this thing is a lot of fun to drive. I definitely think that 
keep in mind, again, like I said before, we're driving it with the max engine, max gearbox, so the performance is a little over the top, but again, I set it up that way because we are on a testing grounds, proving grounds map, and if we were on a campaign map, I definitely would have set it up a little bit differently. Now, one thing, though, that I do find a little bit odd is that the suspension is a tad bouncy, but the thing about that that you gotta remember is the fact that a lot of these old Jeeps, especially, you know, if you had a big leaf spring lift, they were pretty bouncy as well. Now, were they as bouncy as this thing is in the game? Probably not, but... But, at the end of the day, though, it's not that far-fetched to assume that Puppy Master may have engineered in some of that bounciness to be somewhat reminiscent of the real thing. Now, I haven't actually talked to him about that, I haven't actually asked him about that, but he may have. We never know. He may have. Now, jumping back into the drive here, the reason why I had to recover there is because I did end up pitching it over forwards, and... You gotta remember that when you put the winch bumpers on this Jeep, it does add weight to the front, and when you're running the really high suspensions, and you've got a tire that's over 40 inches tall, there is a chance that you could flop the thing over. Now, the only thing about that is, you gotta remember, I think a lot of people are gonna, like, may kind of complain about the fact that this thing, you can flop it over when you're running the tall tires, but... You know, if you're running a Jeep that's got a ton of lift and big tires in real life, you gotta be careful with that too, because you could flop that over as well. So, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, it may not be all that far-fetched from the real thing, obviously minus the performance of the engines and gearboxes that I have on this thing. This particular one, again, is running the max engine and max gearbox, but it is very, very easily uh, changed out for less over-the-top options. Now, I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below if you have used either of these vehicles on consoles yet. Let me know how they are working for you on both Xbox and PlayStation systems, any Xbox or any PlayStation system. Either way, let me know how both of these rigs are working for you. Let me know what you've been using them for. Let me know what maps you've been using them on. And let me know if you've been having fun with them. Now, that is going to do it for this particular console mods video. If you did enjoy it, make sure, again, to leave it any thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time. Next time.